Uh, hello, everybody. Um, my name is Jesse. I am with Pixelcraft Studios. We are creating Avagachi, which is this kind of very unique game using NFTs and DeFi, putting these together. And, um, and today we're going to look a little bit at Avagachi and what we're trying to do. But I kind of want to uh, zoom out a bit and talk more about where the direction of blockchain gaming is going and the potential for avatars. And when I say avatars, let's define that. I'm just talking about like, you know, uh, something that represents you as you interact with all of these different applications that exist on the blockchain. So right now, what's popular on Ethereum? We've got um, uh, DEXs, decentralized exchanges like uh, Uniswap, you know, uh, SushiSwap, if you go that route. Um, and then we also have um, lots of different DAOs that people are interacting with to do governance and support projects they're passionate about and be directly involved. And then you have all sorts of yield farming on the DeFi side where people are able to earn governance tokens or other tokens for staking their collateral into a certain system. And um, all of these are, are quite popular. Um, one that we use on Avagachi that has really had an explosive year is Aave. So what Aave lets you do is take uh, on-chain value you have, like uh, it could be a stable coin or it could be um, something like Link, one of these popular tokens they uh, work with. And you, you stake them into a pool so that they can do lending, uh, much like MakerDAO in some way. And uh, then you can actually earn uh, interest. You can earn yield on your stake. So, and, and you now also get to participate in their governance. Any, I, I mentioned that because these are all powerful tools that are opening up this idea of decentralized finance, but um, DeFi is quite, you know, um, quite intimidating to a lot of people, including myself. Sometimes there's there's something new almost every day. So this Cambrian explosion is happening, and what we see is a lot of different uh, silos kind of growing up around different experiences. And and one of the most exciting points of blockchain is that. You have this interoperability between applications and you should be able to move value from one area to another very seamlessly. But there's limits to that if your identity or at least some, some replacement for identity doesn't move with it. So usually when you think of an avatar, that's your character in your computer game or that's your profile on a social media. So we're going to look at avatars today. And, and Avagachi is one example where we're trying to address this issue, but there's actually a number of them. We're going to take a look around the space and see how avatars can unlock a lot of different potential uh, and, and bring these experiences kind of together and, and break down the silos. So I'm going to open up my uh, presentation here and we'll, uh, we'll take a little spin. Okay, I, I believe you guys can see this now. So. Uh, yeah, as I said, you can see our, our brand there, Pixelcraft Studios. We're building Avagachi. And uh, today's talk is Interoperable Avatars for the Great Web3 MMORPG. A bit of a mouthful, but what we're talking about here is this idea that really Web3 is like one big universe because everything that happens on chain, in theory, can, can connect to one another. All these smart contracts can communicate with one another. There needs to be some way to uh, to make sure that these things don't end up fractured and in a silo. So uh, I'm going to get used to the interface here. Let's see if we can move to the next slide. Yeah, so this is basically what I'm saying, right? It's blockchain, but silos still exist. And um, so the idea we have, and a lot of people are thinking about right now, is how do you kind of get that thread, that needle to thread it all together? Is it the wallets? Maybe some people talk about, well, the wallet is the one thing that moves through all these different applications. Um, that's true. But actually there's a lot of potential for NFTs, non-fungible tokens and game items to also uh, fulfill and maybe even exceed the potential of using a wallet as the only uh, unifying feature in, in this uh, wider space that we refer to as Web3. So um, let's see if we can crisscross the metaverse uh, carrying ID and reputation with an avatar. I want to share uh, one example right now off the bat. They're kind of at the forefront of this uh, very explicitly, and that is 
crypto avatar aptly named. So crypto avatar has this idea that um, you can move between different um, worlds or there, there's these game worlds called metaverses. So for anyone that you know is enjoying this talk, but maybe new to or wants to learn more about the blockchain gaming space, probably the most popular area is metaverse uh, open worlds. So that includes your Decentraland, which is probably the longest running and most well known. And it's, it's amazing because it's an open world where you can build what you want, but, but you own the parcels, the actual land rights, so to speak, are, are on chain via its own NFT. So there's an NFT token for your parcel of land. And if you own that parcel in your wallet, you're able to do all sorts of things. So this is kind of the, the parameters we're working within when we have this discussion about avatars, where are they going? They're going to Decentraland. Right now you have characters and you, you, you have your own being within Decentraland. But then you might also want to interact with something like crypto voxels. Crypto voxels is another very popular metaverse, same premise, you own the world, but it's, it has a different approach. You, if you check it out, it's an amazing uh, app, one of my favorites, because it's so approachable. Um, if you don't have crypto wallets, if you're not with a MetaMask, you just click a link share it with a friend, give them a link, and they too will be transported into that world right through their browser. So it's very lightweight. It's not taxing on your, um, on your computer. You can do it straight from your mobile phone, in fact, and walk around what really appears to be reminiscent of like, like Minecraft. And once again, uh, you're building your own world with these simple Lego blocks. And, um, and it's actually found some great use cases uh, for displaying crypto art, uh, you know, you, you own a certain NFT and you can then have a place to display it or create a kind of art gallery within your own custom made world on crypto voxels. So that's a different world with its own kind of avatar. They have like a basic um, uh, body type and you can dress it up with all sorts of wearables, uh, these other NFT items that you own and display them on your on your character that runs through the world. But again, we have crypto voxels over here and we have um, Decentraland over here, and then you have Insomnium Space or the Sandbox and all these other metaverse type of worlds that are experimenting with this new uh, metaverse idea. And um, so it's amazing to see each one try different things. It's very exciting. But with Crypto Avatar, they're working hard on creating a being that uh, is interoperable and can fit and work within each of these worlds. So you can start to carry that identity from one metaverse to the other. You don't get siloed in just one. And um, I think that's super important. It's, it's very apparent that's the next step for combining some of this value that is existing on separate platforms right now. And I think it's a net win for all of the different so-called metaverses. Um, there, there's really no downside here. It's, it's all about growing the pie as opposed to dividing it up. And um, at Avagachi, we're, we're kind of doing, uh, we, we are very, very much thinking about this in uh, these terms. So we want Avagachi to also crisscross Web3. And there's a couple of ways we do that. We kind of start in our own world with, um, as you can see from our artwork, everything is 2D, um, 8-bit pixel type of uh, artwork. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One, it's just cute and beautiful, but also it's, um, it's, it's a, kind of, yes, it's nostalgic, but it's also like, we don't want to dedicate too many resources to high res 3D designs. We're more interested in getting something that's approachable, intuitive, and uh, simple in its nature. So get down to those core uh, concepts. And so we'll have a metaverse launching in Q1 of next year. And it's going to be, you guessed it, a 2D sprawling metaverse that looks something like Zelda in 1995, right? It's going to be somewhere along those lines. And again, you're going to own your own parcel. Your Avagachi is going to be your avatar that starts earning things on your behalf and moving through this world. But the important part is we're also building our Avagachi, thinking the long term here, and that you'll be able to uh, not just live in our world, but transport and hopefully interact with these other metaverses. And we realize that there's a few key areas to focus on if that's going to ever become uh, possible. So we have to think ahead here with that. And uh, the way we think about it are there's really four basic qualities that have to be addressed 
if there's going to be not just a technical solution to this, but also um, a, a want, or it's going to need to satisfy these things if it's going to, to serve as a good model. So we are looking at an avatar in Avogadro that can traverse the, the metaverse. It could be heading over for a, a day of tea in crypto voxels with your Avogadro, maybe. It could also mean going to Uniswap or Aave and interacting with these other platforms, these other protocols before coming home and uh, settling at home in your 2D pixelated metaverse, which we call the realm. So let's take a look at these four qualities today. And uh, I hope by the end of it, you guys uh, feel enlightened and have a sense uh, that maybe uh, we're on, on the right track. And if you don't, we also love the feedback. So, so the first one is on chain. And what we mean by this is um, all the metadata, right? Every NFT has metadata in it. And some of that metadata is kind of a, something people don't always want to talk about, but a lot of that metadata is actually stored on servers like, um, like, a, like in your Amazon server, something like that. The next kind of step up is it's on kind of a side chain or something dedicated to kind of a cloud service with some nodes and blockchains decentralization. Maybe it's IPFS or Arweave. These are popular choices. And then it's very rare that you get something truly on the base layer. So we're talking about something that's saved all the metadata is existing on the Ethereum network and nowhere else. It's, it's all right there. So it's going to live forever. As long as the Ethereum network lives, that data will never be corrupted. And that, that's kind of the ultimate, right? That's a huge, uh, to me, that's a huge value boost to any NFT that I own. I want to know that it's, it's never going away. It's never being corrupted. So um, Avastars was a big one that pioneered this earlier this year. They uh, really set out on a mission to uh, address this key issue. And they did a great job solving this. Um, what they did was they, they did a lot of R&D on this idea of small SVG files, kind of file type, very lightweight files. They don't take up a lot of memory because we understand Ethereum network is not really meant to be a, a cloud service, right? That's not the, the main purpose here, but if we're gonna do NFTs right and create a, 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 an avatar like we want, we kind of need it. So they figured it out. They kind of cracked the code and um, they have a project called Avastars. You can check out where every SVG file is these rare interrupt, these, these are parts of a face of an avatar, so to speak, but they, uh, they're different rarity levels, like different uh, hairstyles, different eye colors, that kind of thing. And they're all stored as SVGs actually on the Ethereum network. So very exciting and very different from most of the NFTs you see trading out there today. Um, we were quite inspired by this. We took a lot of notes, realized that they are paving the right direction on this front, especially if you're looking at the, you know, it's not saying every NFT needs this feature, but if we want an avatar that really lives forever on the chain, then we do need this. So all our Avogadro artwork is also stored completely on chain. These little lightweight pixelated ghosts completely exist on chain. And we're actually taking it a step further. Um, soon we'll be revealing kind of the full spectrum of an Avogadro where so far, everybody's just seen the front of an Avogadro, like a 2D photo from the front. In fact, the uh, when we create an Avogadro, the uh, the ghost has all sides, left, right side, left, right, back, and every wearable item, every ghost, they all are have images stored on chain that are from every angle. So we're pretty excited about that. We're trying to push the limits there. And um, this is something that I think any... Uh, anyone needs if they want an, uh, an avatar that's going to cross the metaverse or cross the whole network. Uh, the second one is this fancy word of composable, right? And that basically is um, this idea that you can, well, have an Avogadro that, that can interact with other things. So it's the money Legos uh, term we always hear about. And, and so I, I prefer money Legos to comp composable, but um, Mule WTF is a project that's working hard on this. They basically are a wallet service that exists within Discord, and they're doing a lot of exciting things here on this front. Um, in our case, we also treat the Avogadro NFT almost like a wallet. So this addresses what I mentioned earlier about this idea of a, uh, a wallet solving this problem. Maybe an NFT can do it better because 
one thing that our, our kind of background with Pixelcraft is we got started with X, which was the first 721 to have ERC20 tokens st staked directly inside of it through an escrow contract. So we love this idea of value staked NFTs. And in our case, we're taking it a step further. Um, Nick Mudge, our Solidity lead on the project, he was the author of the Diamond Standard, which is uh, a, a new standard on Ethereum that allows for this idea of a parent NFT. And then to actually have different facets, that's why it's called a, a, a diamond. There's different facets and each facet is an upgradable portion of the smart contract. And one of the, the interesting parts about it is it makes it easier to uh, set up this kind of uh, a parent, uh, parent NFT with child NFTs. So what am I talking about here? I'm talking about you have the Avogadro and then you have all the wearables for that Avogadro tied to it. So if my Avogadro goes from my wallet to your wallet, all the, the other NFTs that are connected to that will go with it. So um, Nick Mudge was also one of the co-authors of the ERC-998, uh, which deals a lot with this uh, parent and, and child NFT uh, um, idea. So this helps a lot with composability. You're able to do a lot of things with this, like take different badges and different things you earn by interacting with various dApps and store them in what I like to call a kind of pocket. So my Avogadro is going to have a pocket with a badge from a governance vote, with a badge from achieving a certain uh, trade reward on Uniswap, or from going over to CryptoVoxels and interacting with those guys for a meetup. All those things could theoretically and, and on a technical level very easily be represented via an NFT badge that is collected by that Avogadro. And now next thing you know, your Avagachi is basically building a reputation of non-transferable NFTs that are in his pocket, its pocket, and, uh, and building this profile. This is really important if we want to start talking about bigger ideas like uh, credit scores and DeFi. Um, now, I mentioned going over to CryptoVoxels with my Avagachi. Well, CryptoVoxels is 3D. It's more like a Minecraft type of style. So it wouldn't make a lot of sense, right? So that's why you need to be convertible. So number three would be that, you know, metaverse worlds have different formats. Uh, GLB is a popular 3D format. Uh, Decentraland uses that. And um, so the avatars need to be easily convertible from their native form. So in our case, the Avogadro realm is a pixel art world that's very welcoming. And what we'd like to do, because it may be harder for us to get into other worlds, but at least the first stage, it should be pretty easy for people in other projects to uh, create some on-chain data, some little pixel art uh, representation and come in and visit. So there could be a pixelated Axie Infinity that comes by for a visit to the realm uh, before going back to their own uh, game or metaverse. And uh, this is something that can be done with just a little bit of cooperation, but on the technical level, everything is there and kind of already thought through so that it's easy to integrate with one another and pay each other a visit. So when their NFT comes into our world, we recognize it. The smart contract says, oh, okay, uh, display this other uh, artwork. So convertibility, definitely a key to making the experience more enjoyable, especially between games. Maybe not so much with the dApps, but definitely between games. The fourth one is uh, going back to this idea of value. It, it, it's valuable because, you know, NFTs have a speculative value, but it, this is more about transporting value. And this is what I alluded to earlier, where the NFT actually acts as a wallet. Some, uh, you could call it an NFT wallet. And so you could stake different ERC-20 tokens, different 1155 tokens or 721s to an Avogadro or to any other metaverse hopping avatar and they would need to be able to hold those through some sort of escrow smart contract and hold those and then move with them uh, wherever they go. So um, in our case, Avogadro's have this intrinsic value right off the bat because, um, by the way, Avogadro's aren't live yet. They're going to go live in a couple of weeks, uh, right around New, uh, New Year's, right at the end of the year. We'll have a date to announce soon. But what's going to happen is... Um, I'll just show you actually uh, here in a minute. Let's just jump ahead a bit. Um, so, so 
this value inside is a uh, is Ave's A tokens. Ave has all types of A tokens. You can see a few here: A Link, A Lend, A SNX, even A YFI. Perhaps we haven't confirmed that one yet. We'd like to have it though. And what it means is, uh, right here, you can see kind of the work, the flow. So let's say somewhere at the end of the year, uh, the first haunt arrives. That means you're going to have all these portals. And you get a portal with our ghost token. And then to summon, you're going to open the portal. You're going to see 10 Avagachi inside, randomly generated, with a little help from Chainlink's Oracle. And you only get to choose one. The other nine are going to disappear. But the one you choose, you have to summon it with the correct collateral and a, a minimum stake. So you say, oh, I really want the A-Link Avagachi. I like his personality traits. I like its... Um, I like everything about it, so I'm gonna go. So you gotta go to Ave or Uniswap, get your A tokens, your A link. You come back, you stake it into that particular Avagachi to summon it, the other nine disappear. Now you can train with it, vote with it, play with it. Um, but now you have value inside of it. Your Avagachi is actually like a piggy bank holding a certain amount of A tokens inside of it. So this is, um, this is what we mean when we talk about a value staked NFT. So you're able to add to and increase that A token balance. You're able to um, withdraw. You, um, if you pull all of the A tokens out, then you're under the minimum stake requirement for that particular Avagachi. And uh, it's kind of crazy, but your, your Avagachi will start to disappear. So you really do want to keep a minimum. Otherwise, you could be burning your Avagachi and, uh, and making it disappear um, for another day. So... So this is the idea of having value move around with it, right? It's It becomes a lot more interesting if your avatar can hop from dApp to dApp and have its own bank account, its own balance of maybe not just one, but possibly various tokens. Those could be ERC-20 uh, tokens, stable coins. They could be badges you've earned along the way. Some of those badges may be non-transferable. They're bound to that avatar's ID and growing history. Others could be transferable and something that you'd want to trade on. Um, this, is, this is the kind of flexibility that an avatar that can hop from dApp to dApp uh, needs. And uh, you can see here with our uh, anatomy of an Avagachi, you have your DeFi collateral stake, that's your Ave A token. You have your wearable NFTs. Those are also um, able to be equipped or unequipped, and you basically have like I think six different um, slots for wearables. You have the face, the head, the left and right hands, the body. You can adjust all of these different wearables and uh, they actually add to your rarity score, which is a whole nother thing. Um, because you wanna have a high rarity level, then you can do what we call rarity farming. So that's kind of different though. That's more the gamification side. And today I'm just here to share this idea of what if you had some sort of ID that can this avatar that can move from place to place. And we're definitely addressing that with Avagachi. So you can see, we've thought this through pretty well. Um, we have the on-chain metadata. We have the value staked NFTs. Uh, there's many games and competitive gaming inside of the game uh, within our metaverse. Uh, yes, they're provably scarce, aren't they all? Um, then there's the rarity farming I just alluded to where it's like play to earn kind of model. And you're basically incentivized to not just collect dust, one of the big things with uh, Avagachi is, you know, um, too many NFTs just collect dust. If they're not being constantly traded and speculated on, they just kind of go in a, a wallet and wait for a better day. But we actually have some game mechanics where it checks on chain how often you've interacted with that Avagachi. And I think that's going to go a long way to helping it become that avatar that it needs to be because you have a kinship score and you want to keep your kinship score up. And the only way to do that is to uh, every now and then... Um, have some interaction with your Avagachi. That could be take the form of changing uh, clothes, uh, or it could take the form of actually just petting it and all these different uh, uh, things, but just checking in and spending time with your your new best friend, the Avagachi. So um, yeah, we've, we've thought this through from a lot of different sides. I wanna use the last few minutes here to do a Q&A. And, &A. and um, yeah. Let's uh, let's let's talk about this a little bit more. So I'm going to head over to the Q and A before we conclude this, and uh, I hope this gives you a good idea of the main problem we're trying to address here today, which is you know that that Web three is kind of 
fractured right now and everything's in a silo. So what could we do to, um, to bridge these all together and, um, and, and make something that really um, combines the value? Uh, as I wait for questions here, I, I, I think one that I can address right now is this idea of why, why do you wanna do this? And, and one big one would be, you know, there's a lot of value on chain and with DeFi right now, pretty much all the loans and collateral, it all works through collateral, right? If you wanna take out a loan, you have to put some collateral up and risk it and say, if I can't pay you back, you get my collateral. But in the real world, there's kind of two ways. There's collateral or there's credit, right? The, the world runs on credit scores and that's tied to your history of making credit card payments, student loan payments, um, you know, all those kind of things, bankruptcies, the good and the bad, it all goes into a credit score and that helps you get a loan, it informs them. That's difficult to do right now with DeFi, but there needs without, you know, and then the other part of crypto is you don't wanna be fully exposed and fully uh, KYC'd. So if, if you want that kind of hybrid solution, I think the avatar uh, that we're describing today has amazing potential to take DeFi and say, here's another way to get a loan. We can plug in your, oh, you have an Avogadro in your wallet. Oh, wow, you've had an Avogadro, this Avogadro for three years. Your kinship score is off the charts. You have badges from four, four or five different DAOs. You're actively involved in three of them. We see tons of badges earned from some very reputable DAOs. And um, we also see that you uh, have made previous loans and paid them back early and you have badges to prove that as well. And we can also see that this definitely was you or at least your wallet because this Avogadro hasn't left your wallet in these three years. So suddenly you basically have a credit score without revealing your name, you just reveal your Avogadro's name. And so maybe I should have said this up front, but that's kind of the vision of where this goes and answers the big question of why. Why should we do this? And um, I think it's, it's a, it unlocks so much potential because right now DeFi is totally focused on the collateral side, but over time there's going to be solutions to this credit side. And my hope is that it doesn't look at all like what we have in the normal brick and mortar banks today. And instead it can actually rely on things like an NFT that has a certain history to it that you can use to uh, boost your reputation score. And um, so with that, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Um, I guess if there's no more questions, we will wrap it up now and um, invite you to check out Avogadro. We'll be live by the end of the year or very, very close to it. And we'll have more info coming on that soon. So just check out avogadro.com. If you find this interesting, we also just published a new wiki page so wiki.avagachi.com has basically the deep dive. And um, we look forward to seeing you in the metaverse. Thank you.